Great. Thanks for having me. Thanks for the organizers for putting me on the, on the program. And it's been a very interesting discussion, so thanks for everyone uh, for that. This paper is called Complexity Version of Seeking Alpha. And the goal of this paper is to really understand how complexity maybe matters for investor attention and market outcomes. And it's related to a lot of papers that are looking at this process of how news enters markets. In, the, in order for news to enter markets, someone has to look at it. It could be a machine. It could be a human. Uh, and there are a number of papers now that are trying to explore these patterns. So there are a number of papers that use proxies for investor attention, like Google search, Bloomberg usage, and correlate that with returns, underreactions, for example. And then now there are papers that are also looking at textual features of news, like complexity, and also sentiment, and show that people seem to underreact to negative sentiment, people seem to underreact to complex news. Uh, this paper is going to try to introduce some techniques to causally decide whether there is an effect of textual attributes on attention and market outcomes. And, th and the reason I say causally is because uh, all these papers are, are really cool, uh, interesting and great, uh, but it's hard to distinguish what is actually being measured and whether there's any omitted variable. So, for example, an event, a negative event, like a bankruptcy announcement, will be negative in tone. It may get a certain amount of attention. It may be, have a certain complexity, and it may have a certain market reaction. So the nature of the event, which is very hard to control for, could drive everything that we're looking at. So is, are we underreacting to negative words because they're a proxy for complex news, bankruptcy news, uh, and so forth? So this is going to introduce, my, my paper introduces two techniques to isolate from the event and all these other possible omitted variables, textual attributes, and then within that, complexity. Uh, so let me talk to you how I do that. Uh, so I have, the first technique I have is going to use seeking alpha data, much like Marina used. Um, but I'm going to have experimental data in the sense that uh, uh, if we want to answer the question and do title attributes like sentiment and complexity matter for attention, we're going to need to have some measure of attention to a text. In this case, I'm going to look at titles. So measure of attention to titles, variation in those titles that's unrelated to the context. Uh, so let me tell you a little bit about the technique. It's called title testing. This is something that's being used a lot with online media providers, social media providers, for example, Seeking Alpha, where my data comes from. Uh, it's not being done, interestingly, by Wall Street Journal and Financial Times and some of the media outlets in this room. I asked them why they don't do title testing. And they said because they think that their, ed their editors or staff know how to write titles. They don't test them. Uh, at least that's what I, if, if I'm wrong about that, please correct me. Uh, but what's nice about the Seeking Alpha setting is they have this title testing. And how that works, uh, we, we've talked about Seeking Alpha, so I won't belabor it, but it's, it's again one of these crowdsourced research platforms. I've written articles for Seeking Alpha. Uh, the audience are generally investors, and they're generally quite wealthy. And uh, one of the interesting reasons to use it, which wasn't mentioned, was uh, one, you get instant feedback from a lot of people who follow the same company. And also, it's a social networking uh, medium. So I've met 10% shareholders. I've talked to CEOs. They contact you privately, usually. And then you can have discussions that go on for many, you know, for a long time. Um, so uh, it's a great way to actually meet people. Uh, and, and that's underemphasized. So going back to, t uh, and this is what an article looks like. So you have a title, Titan International, they make farm tires. This is uh, author Swaraj. He has a CFA, so and that's verified. So I have some sense of how sophisticated the author was. And you can see from the summary bullets, which precede the article, that this is a pretty technical article. He's talking about multiples and revenues. And, and much like an analyst report, you might see from a big bank. Uh, but this is for a very small cap company. So that's the value proposition of Seeking Alpha is they'll cover small cap stocks. So going back to the title testing, what happens is that the authors who write the title, uh, write the article like Swaraj can propose two titles for the same exact report. And then an editor who reviews the article before it's published can provide a third title. And these titles are then randomly assigned to the audience who's opted in to get alerts on that company. So for Titan, some investors follow it. It's like 1,500 investors. Uh, once this article is released, they all get an email in their inbox. And it looks like this. And it, they're going to get one of the titles randomly assigned to them. In this case, it's about Freeport McMoran, which is a big oil and gas company and copper company. Um, but they're going to get one of these emails. The, and, and what's 
What varies across these emails is the bold, which is the title. So you're going to get Freeport MacMoran capitulation, keep an eye on cash flows, tempting but risky at four. And these are randomly assigned, so it's very clean in that perspective. And what's nice is that I can therefore compare uh, attention to these titles. So what I see is I see, you know, the author is fixed, the time is fixed, and I, what I see is how many people click the blue link by title. And this is very clean setting. So I'm looking within the same event, the same author, the same time, at attention and how that varies with the title, right? So I can get rid of all of those concerns I raised on the first slide. Uh, now I can really ask the question, what would the attention have been to the news had I given it a different title? And that's gonna let me focus in on the title attributes. Do title attributes matter at all for attention to news? This is a high stake setting where you might not think it does. These are investors, presumably they have money in this company, that's why they're getting alerts in their inbox. And, and if, uh, you wouldn't think that they would be very sensitive maybe to some of these title attributes. And that's what I'm gonna look at uh, first. So I'm gonna look at complexity. And with titles, there's not too many, you can't use a fog index or something like that to measure complexity. So I use character count, that's an obvious one. Uh, you can do word count, that's highly correlated with that. You can use the length of the words as a proxy for difficulty and how familiar the words are. Uh, I'm just gonna talk about one of those for today. And it's a simple regression, I, I do views on complexity. But again, the innovation of this setting is I can look at titles for the exact same article, same author, same date, same firm. I'm just comparing attention within that, that, that event. Um, and so what I find with just a correlation, I'm not, I'm not taking advantage of my setting. No, there's no setting, I'm just running a pure correlation, is if I take title length and I take the attention, that's the, the you know, Y variable here, uh, it's positively related, 0.04. Uh, it looks like there's a pot, like longer titles actually get more attention. But when I take advantage of my setting and I control for all these omitted variables, like the author's skill, the firm attributes, the investor base, all that kind of stuff, I get a negative 0.11 and it's extremely significant. T stats like 30, um, it's very robust. I can measure this daily and I get a, almost exactly the same coefficient. So I've, I've, it's a very, very strong result. Uh, the, it's also pretty meaningful, so in terms of R squared, it explains actually quite a substantial amount. The within is 6%. Man, that's, that's a technical point. But, and, and also, uh, to give it a magnitude, a standard deviation change in title length is predicting about 12% less views. So that's a big magnitude. Big magnitude. And this, again, very robust initial result. If you benchmark that against something else, like the, the move in the VIX, when the VIX goes up by a standard deviation, there's about 8% more attention to articles on Seeking Alpha. Uh, so something about this title attribute matters. And, and the question then is what? Uh, are longer titles boring? Are longer titles more informative? Are longer titles uh, signals of fake news? You know, what is going on with title length? What is it, what is it actually measuring? Uh, is it complexity or is it something else? So there's initial, initially a strong result. Uh, this is just emphasizing how strong it is. Uh, and, and it gets to some of these questions about the alternative uh, so I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm fa I, I, in the end, I conclude that it looks like it's complexity rather than some of these other stories I just said, like information content. One way to see that is, well, what if I only look at titles that are one character different? So remember, you get an email with only one title in it. That's all that's in the email. And someone else gets an email with a, a different title. And I'm looking at the ones that are just one character different. That's it. I'm getting the same magnitudes. So. There's not a lot of information. I'm not looking at things that are very different in information volume. I can also look at the actual content of the titles. So for example, there are titles like the first two that are very similar. Malakindrukt is a one-hit wonder. Is Malakindrukt a one-hit wonder? Exactly the same content, but differences in length. And, or very different titles where there could be difference in the information content. Uh, no real catalyst for Invesco. Invesco's dividend is secure. For each of those, so the first column is the highly similar ones, I get exactly the same coefficient as if I look at the very different co uh, content. So it doesn't look like there's a story about differences in content uh, that are driving this result. It looks like there's something about pure complexity. Uh, but, and I do something else that's cute, I guess, which is pixel length. So I look at the characters like I has a shorter pixel length than characters like M. So if you, that matters when you have long titles uh, or like more characters in your title as I show here. Uh, and when I, when I control for the number of characters in your title, 
Uh, and I look at the, if, and the, I, in the third regression on the, on the third column, I look at only titles that are all longer than 45 characters. So I'm looking at long titles. There I get the same magnitude with just the pixel length variation. And, and it's hard to then tell the story again about pixel length capturing differences in information content or whatever. So it looks like there's a pretty uh, consistent story about this being somewhat of a complexity measure, not really a measure of something else. And if you think about it, if you look at a bunch of titles, right, and this is not exactly how my setting works, you only actually see one title at a time, but if you looked at a bunch of titles, like your email box, these are all your subject lines, you look always, everyone always looks at either Navistar reports fourth quarter re results or the, the Neogen reports 16% uh, increase in net income. But you look at that first before you look at longer titles. It's just something that we all do. And those, those news events seem to get more attention, uh, just get more attention, and does that matter? Well, it, it, uh, that's what I'm gonna start investigating. Uh, I also look at sentiment. Uh, this, this is not as clean in the end, my conclusion, but I, I look at it. Uh, here I do positive words minus negative words, and uh, in the second column, yeah, I'm looking at it within the article, so I'm comparing sentiment across these titles, and it looks like there's a negative relationship. So positive titles get less attention, negative titles get more attention. Um, this is something that a lot of people think about, like, oh, short, obviously you should write short negative titles. In, the, in journalism, I think that's something that people have concluded, right? But it, it, what's surprising is no one has really taken advantage of title testing data to confirm that. Uh, so that's, that's nice, I, I'm confirming that here. I control for complexity by in terms of title length, and what you see is the magnitude sort of is, it decreases about, by about 20%. And if you look at the last column, positive words get less attention, negative words get more attention. Um, okay, so, so far I'm showing you, uh, I've showed you some results about complexity and sentiment. Now I'm gonna talk to you about how the sensitivities to these attributes vary with cognitive ability. So, if we think that investors are very sophisticated, maybe they're on, it doesn't matter to them. Maybe this is all driven by mom and pop retail investor kind of person, right? So what I do in this table is I look at how the, co the, the relationship with length varies with all of these other attributes. And so I'll just call out the last row, the M MBA or CFA. So there I look at the audience of the, of the article, the people who received the article, and I say, do you have an MBA or a CFA um, you know, from your profile? So you can see everyone's profiles and they, they have a description. And CFAs are, are actually verified, MBA is not verified. But if there's a higher proportion of people, this is an interaction term, but if there are a higher proportion of people with these sophisticated, you know, with these degrees and they look more sophisticated, you see that the relationship, that minus 0.11 at the top, it becomes less important. You add the two coefficients, you get minus 0.09. Um, it's still there though. In terms of magnitude, it doesn't go away even for, these are all standardized, so standard deviation change in, in, in the MBA in the population doesn't wipe, wipe away the result. So sophisticated audiences look like they're less sensitive, but they still are sensitive in a, in a pretty important uh, way, in a big way. Um, so I'll, I'll just highlight that one. I use other proxies for sophistication, like uh, do you work in a finance job? That's the next row up. Uh, do you write very numerical comments? So do you put a lot of numbers into your comments or your, in general? I call you more sophisticated if you do that. Do you write longer comments or do you write short comments? I, I assume that longer comments are more sophisticated. And, uh, and, uh, and I do some other things. So um, it looks like the takeaway from this slide is more sophisticated people are less sensitive to comple this, this complexity measure of title length, but they still are sensitive, uh, quite sensitive. Another way to get at cognitive abilities is to say, is there something different about the people who click on long titles? So here, my, my y variable changes. I'm not looking at attention or number of clicks on the title. I'm looking at, if you clicked, did you read the full report? So it's a different y variable. Uh, so I call it read to end. Do you read the whole article? And, and they keep track of this. And what it shows is that the people who click on longer titles have a positive relationship. So they tend to be more likely to read the full report. And that's consistent with the people who have less complexity aversion being also more likely to read the report. 
this, I only have data here for January and February, that's why the sample size is so much smaller uh, of, of one year. But it's a very significant result. Okay, I still have any, I, I showed some suggestive evidence that title length is picking up complexity. I said, look, only one character, different titles. I showed this is content, is this, if I make the content the same, I still get the relationship. But another way to make it maybe cleaner is I can do something uh, called an instrument, which if you haven't taken the econometrics is not gonna be something that's easy to understand right away. But what I do is I isolate variation in titles length that's only coming from the company's legal name. So every company has a legal name that has differences in length. For example, you have McKesson, Amerisaurus Bergen, you have Sonic, Jack in the Box. Every time they write a press release, that name is in the press release title, right? And it's gonna give me differences in the length of titles that's not related to the event. It's chosen in the past, right? You choose your name decades ago, your earnings announcement today or your Seeking Alpha article today is not gonna have any new information that's correlated with like your legal name. So it's, an, it's a nice way to get, uh, have a variable that gives me variation in titles that's not gonna, in the length of titles that's not related to the actual content. Uh, when I do that, uh, and I instrument, that's the last row, or last column, you can see I get in the bold, I get minus 0.16. So I get something that's quite similar to what I was getting before, the minus 0.12. Um, so this is just another way to verify. Here I'm using, within an industry again, variation in the length. I'm not using that nice, so this is the second approach, right? The first approach was I have this randomized title experiment where people get emails with different titles. That gave me the, like, a minus 0.12. Here I'm doing something else. I'm saying, let's look within an industry at variation in titles that's just due to the legal name that you chose a long time ago. And I get a similar result. So that, and, and what's nice about using the name again is that's not gonna, it, it, it gets at the story of longer titles are just more informative or they're more interesting or boring or, or any of those other stories are ruled out by this. So it's a, it's a, nice, uh, it's a nice tool. So now, once I have, uh, once I've established this, this instrument and kind of verified it using the Seeking Alpha data, it's interesting to ask, does any of this really matter for market reactions to news? And to get at that, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna look at press releases, earnings announcements in particular. And, and so there's, it's, it's, you know, within Seeking Alpha, all I've shown is attention results. So there are investors who pay less attention to longer titles. And that's interesting, it's an investor behavior result in some sense, right? Now this is more a market result. Does any of this really matter in aggregate for market prices? If, if machines are reading news, like some of you guys are doing in the room, uh, and you're quantifying the news, that has, that, no, that's not gonna be affected by the length of titles in terms of what people pay attention to. Um, maybe good old-fashioned investors who still read press releases by hand and, 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 and go through 10Ks, uh, those guys, they may actually have some of these biases. Okay? Uh, so does any of it matter? Is it all, does it have uh, any aggregate implication? And, and so I'm going to look again at not seeking alpha articles, I'm looking now at just company earnings announcements, right? And I have, uh, I have a big data set here. I think I have the, no, I know. So I have like 400,000. Um, press releases from 1988 like, up till 2016 or so. And uh, the challenge with the setting, obviously, is that titles are chosen by the company, right? You, the company is gonna, now, uh, is gonna structure a title uh, based on the event that they're reporting. So it's, in do, it's, it's, it's something that's chosen, it's not randomly assigned, right? It's, and so title length by itself is gonna be correlated with the event type and, and it, I don't know if, what you would guess, but uh, if, I do the res, if I do a regression, if I look at positive news, defined as your earnings were higher than analyst expectations, and I look at title length, uh, you, my results so far would say you should write shorter titles for positive news. In fact, the exact opposite happens. Art, all articles for positive news have longer titles, significantly longer titles, um, and and that's like with it, a within firm, you know, I'm looking within firm for academics in the room. So um, companies with longer titles, or po more positive news, write longer titles, they should perhaps write shorter titles. Why do they write longer titles? Because they put 
positive words in their titles. So they start saying record and earnings or, or close the you know, new drug trial results or something like that. If they have negative news, they keep it out of the titles. They don't add any words. So they say reports second quarter earnings. Boring, like make it maybe boring. So they're, they are trying to, in some sense, they're being strategic with their titles. They're trying to keep negative words out of the prep title, right? In the process, though, they actually make shorter titles. Uh, and, and, and when they have positive news, they, again, they write the longer titles. That's just an interesting result that I showed. So there's, uh, there's variation in title structure based on the news that people are reporting. And what's interesting is the actual article for positive news is shorter. So they have longer titles and shorter articles. Uh, and for negative news, they have shorter titles and longer articles. Uh -huh. So anyway, what I'm going to use now is my instrument, which is, again, a fancy way to give me variation that's not related to the actual earnings surprise. So I want variation in title length to, to isolate a pure complexity effect, not related to anything about the actual event or earnings surprise, just complexity alone, number of characters in your title. I'm going to use the legal name again to give me that variation, something that was chosen long ago. Right? It can't be related to the earnings announcement, surprise. And this is uh, all the market results. So if I look at the first column, my Y variable is turnover on announcement. And so my title length here is, again, only based on the variation that's driven by companies' legal names. So, so Jack in the Box versus Sonic. right? That's giving me variation in that variable. And how does that variable, therefore, relate to the turnover? And it's negative. And it's, it, remember, in the Seeking Alpha result, we showed that about, there was a 12% reduction for a standard deviation change in title length. Here, there's about a 4 or 5% reduction in turnover for a standard deviation increase in title length. Uh, this, these results are less clean. Obviously, I'm not randomizing things. I don't have uh, as great a setting. But the magnitudes are actually quite consistent with what I saw in the nice, clean setting that I had with Seeking Alpha. Uh, so, so it looks like people do pay maybe less attention to earnings announcements that have longer titles, and, and, uh, that, which is consistent with the results up until now. So maybe there is some market implications for this. Um, and I do the same thing with trade count, which is just a, a number of trades on the NASDAQ exchange. And that's, kept, that's tracked for certain stocks. Uh, it's a smaller sample, but I get almost the same relationship. Okay, then I look at some measures of volatility. So is there more or less volatility on announcement? One way to measure that in the short term is look at the, the range, like how much movement after what, the, after the high versus the low, for example, of the day. Um, or I can look at just the return squared. And in both of those cases, you get a negative relationship too. So it looks like when you have this longer title, just because of you know, no information differences, just number of characters due to a legal name, you get, you get a negative relationship. So not only are less people trading, but you see less uh, you know, volatility, which is consistent with people not being as involved in processing the information. Um, the last result is perhaps the more interesting one, uh, um, which is whether there's an asset pricing implication. Is there price underreaction to this news? And if so, does it reverse? And these are all standardized variables, but it, it does look like, uh, so I interacted with positive surprise. So ba again, based on analyst expectations, it looks so the title length is really negative news. You can think about it that way. So for negative news, which is the, uh, I'm looking at column five, for negative news, you see 0 0.118. You see what looks like the price does not fall as much for companies with longer names than it did for companies with shorter names. Okay, and if you look at the last column, so if you look at actually column six and seven, that, that might be easier. These are levels. These are not standardized variables. They're just levels, so these are returns. And you can see that there's this underreaction in the sense that the price doesn't fall as much at time t for the announcement. But if I look at the next 90 days, t plus one onwards after the announcement, you see what looks like this uh, reversal in the same magnitude, um, which would be consistent with the market underreacting and then having more post earnings announcement drift for negative news. What's interesting is I don't see it really for positive news. Uh, if you look at the coefficients, it doesn't really look like there's a result for positive news, but it looks like there's something for negative news. Uh, so 
Uh, the seeking alpha setting, again, was what I showed you first. It, very clean setting. It looks like title attributes actually matter for how much attention you get. Then the question was, all the attributes are correlated. Complexity is correlated with sentiment, right? Negative news is generally more complex. And, and so can we tease out complexity from all the other stuff? For that, I did that instrument with the legal name. And I showed, actually, it does look like complexity matters. And then using that instrument or the legal name, I went to the earnings announcements, a different setting. And I said, is there any market implication? And it does look like they're market implications. Um, then, uh, what I do is I look at, does this pattern vary on different kinds of days? So again, on, on high VIX days, I showed you or I told you that, that there's more attention to news. Uh, so is, com does complexity matter more on quiet days, boring days, when people are not really engaged, or does it matter more on busy days when they're attention constrained? It's not quite obvious. My results are that it matters more on quiet days for unsurprising news, uh, when people are not, they don't have as much expected benefit of reading, the complexity cost of engaging with material is more important. So there's a trade-off. The benefit of reading news versus the cost you have to pay. What's interesting, though, is that titles are not very costly to process, so it becomes a little bit of a behavioral story. It's not really a big cost, but it seems to matter. Uh, so on high VIX days, that's, uh, you have a positive relationship if I interact it, so it looks like the relationship is less significant. Um, that's just the takeaway here. What's interesting is on Fridays, on Seeking Alpha, at least, there's a lot less engagement with news. People actually don't look at the news as much on Fridays. Um, there's some debate about this in academics, about what, the Friday effect, but they actually don't look at much news on Fridays. And if I look at the relationship uh, on busy days, which is my proxy, this variable's proxy for busy days, which are like Mondays through Thursdays or so, you actually see a weaker relationship. It's on Fridays that you would get a stronger relationship. So people look like they're more complexity averse on Fridays. Also, in intraday, what's nice with the Seeking Alpha data is I can see the emails sent out by minute. So I can look you know, at, at midnight versus noon versus you know, 11 p.m., how much attention do new, news articles get? And what's interesting is in the morning, as people are going to work or getting into the office, they actually seem to engage a lot more with content. So y, the y-axis is how many people view an email that, when they get it. And so in the morning, they are more likely to engage than later. And what I find in terms of my result is that in the afternoon, when there was less engagement, there's more complexity aversion. So it's, it's stronger when people are less engaged, not paying attention, um, when things are maybe you know, slow news days, on, like Fridays. If investors are more sophisticated, 13F ownership, if there's a lot of institutional investors, it looks like it's weaker. So it does look like maybe the sophistication of the investor base matters. If there's analysts covering it, it's weaker. So if there's analysts that are writing about the news, the title of the news is probably not as important, right? If someone else or the media is picking up on the news, how the press release, how the company chose to write a title probably isn't as important. And that's consistent with this result. For bigger news, so if the news is very surprising, you beat by a big margin your analyst expectations, then again, it's probably more likely that people are gonna read the news, the benefit of reading the news is higher, complexity matters less. So for surprising news, it's not as important. But for boring, dull, slow news days, uh, complexity aversion seems to be stronger. Those are the takeaways. And one interesting thing that I, I like to show audiences is that if you look at, this is the, maybe a, a sophisticated audience with some of us PhDs. If you look at academics uh, and you look at how their, how their papers fare, I can control for you. I can say you know, author fixed effect. That's a technical term. I get almost the exact same coefficient, title length 0.11 negative, with abstract views. <laughs> this is a thought, food for thought. Tell me about <laughs> so my title is actually quite long. I'd rather call it like short or something. I mean, complexity version with Seeking Alpha is not a short title, but um, I chose it and I'm kind of stuck with it, just like a legal name. You know. Okay, that's the end of my results. So. Thank you.